Good morning, Josh here from Team Hon Blog. Today we are making a Husafell stone. Because I've got a strongman competition coming up here in about four weeks. And uh, I need to practice with the Husafell stone as part of uh, one of the events, a carry medley. So uh, let me show you the plans that we're going with. All right, here we are. I got these prints right here off of, uh, I think it's called Vince's Muscle Shop. <laughs> So, um, and we can do it a few different thicknesses. We're gonna go with five inches thick because at five inches, I think you, with the rebar, it's supposed to be around 230 pounds. Competition weight is 225. So that'll be, that'll be good. Um, we're gonna cut the plywood, however, at six inches tall and I'll show you how we'll keep our depth because we can do it at four inches, five inches or six inches thick which I think gives us a 195 pound, 230, and a 275, um, which will be a good variety. But today we're just gonna make the 230 pound stone. So first thing we gotta do is uh, rip up some plywood. So let's uh, rip up this plywood to six inches wide, and then uh, we'll start cutting our lengths. When I uh, set my table saw up, I always measure to the blade um, instead of going off of what, you know, the fence says here, because this can be off a little bit. So measure to the blade, six inches. You want to make sure this is nice and square. Otherwise, uh, the cut will be off. So anyway, on some older saws where this isn't super tight, you can measure to the, um, little grooves that for the, uh, different guides you can use, um, and make sure that it's, all even, but this, this saw is pretty good with the fence. Anyway, start ripping. All right, so now I think we'll go ahead and cut our sides there, right there, 30 degrees. So, Looks like square point to long point is two foot two and 11 sixteenths. We'll cut two of those. Okay, then a 30 to a square point, one foot, Half inch. All right, the top got a 35 degree angle on each end, and it looks like it's one foot five, five sixteenths, long point to long point. And our last piece, eight and a half inches, long point to long point, 25 degrees. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do real quick um, is make some chamfer strips. So if you don't know what that is, basically it's uh, just like a 45 degree angle from the end, it just looks like a triangle strip of wood um, to put a beveled edge on all the edges of the concrete. And we'll also use this to set the height uh, at five inches. So we're gonna use this a little bit of one by four. Hopefully we've got enough of it, or it's not one by four anymore. Um, but uh, we'll rip some chamfer out of that. Basically, cut the blade at a 45, right up close to the fence. Do a little test cut. You can see pretty much right there. So, gonna use that. You gotta be real careful not to, you know, cut your fingers off.
All right, I made a mark at five inches, five inches tall. That's where I'm gonna nail the top of the uh, chamfer strip. So that'll be my grade mark. When I reuse it again to make like the 195 stone and the 270 stone, or 275, whatever it was, um, I can set a mark at four inches and then set the chamfer strip at the top of the plywood um, to make those other sizes. So I'm gonna nail this together real quick and then we'll start cutting the chamfer strip. All right, so I just put some scrap wood on the perimeter to kind of hold it down because you don't want the concrete to kind of push the forms up. Um, I did read that you can pour this thing just right on your con on your like shop floor. If you put like a bag down and uh, tape the form to the bag, it won't leak, but I don't want the shop space occupied by this for a week. So uh, I'm doing it on this plywood and uh, I'm gonna move it so it's not in the way of the shop. Um, but anyway, I just, uh, I fastened one down, one side down. And you wanna use, uh, you know, like your nails on the inside of the form because if you use screws, it's gonna make stripping it a pain in the butt. But uh, anyway, I nailed one edge down and then squared it. I mean, it's obviously not a square, but you can still do the whole cross me measurement thing, make each measurement the same, and then you know that it's uh, all even. And then I just uh, fastened it around, and you don't have to nail it a ton, like, it's not a lot of pressure, it's only five inches of concrete. All right, next step is to cut the chamfer strips and uh, get all the chamfered edge on. All right, chamfer is all in. Kind of had a huge, huge delay in progress with uh, just trying to get the supplies. I had to go to work for a little bit. And uh, then North 40 had none of what I needed. So uh, it took me a little bit over town, but I got the concrete now. We're gonna get ready to cut the rebar. Um, I'm gonna hold it off like an inch and a half or so from the perimeter. And uh, these are measurements. 16 and 24 and 8, 2 at 22, 2 at 28. I'm going to use just a little cutoff wheel to cut them. And uh, you might have noticed I wasn't always wearing safety glasses cutting the wood. And eh, I just like to use my blink reflexes. But when you're cutting metal, you definitely want to wear safety glasses. I'm not saying that it's not important with wood, but it is especially important when you're cutting metal. Is getting uh, you know rust ground out of your eyeball with a Dremel doesn't feel good. So anyway, uh, we're gonna cut this bar and start tying it in place.
All right, well, I thought I was going to pour this thing first thing in the morning, but uh, I got called in to work last night, so I had to get a little bit of sleep. Anyway, we're ready to pour now. Um, I got it kind of leveled up. It doesn't have to be perfect because the concrete's not going to like 100% self-level. It'll slump a little bit, so, um, but I got it, you know, within a quarter inch just with some random pieces of wood. Uh, I am going to pull that rebar <clears throat> grid out and then pour about half of the mud and then set the rebar in and then pour the second half. We also need to get some sort of releasing agent on there. I'm just going to use WD-40. Back when I used to do concrete all the time, we would use diesel or form oil, but WD-40 works. So I'm going to spray that down and we'll start mixing that concrete. All right, we've had an unfortunate thing happen here. So according to the prints, this thing's supposed to be around two, 230 pounds. So I thought, you know, 240 pounds of concrete would fill it. Because it was 230 pounds with the rebar. Um, and three bags of concrete is just like barely not enough. So the chamfer is not gonna work. So I need to quickly Pull that top layer chamfer off so I can get an edger on it. Otherwise, it's just going to look stupid. Um, still not going to have the look that I really wanted. But that's all right. It's still going to be heavy, and that's the most important thing. So I'm going to pull that chamfer off and uh, start edging it. Alright, the other thing you want to do is gently tap your forms around the perimeter and that kind of gets all the air bubbles and stuff off the edge so it looks nice. You don't want to go too crazy because you can, forms aren't built good, they're they like a little part. So edging it right now, the only thing I'm really doing is knocking the rocks down because the cream is going to fill in the edges again. Um, so this is like not the final finish. This is just trying to get the rocks knocked down. So when we finish it later in about an hour, um, we don't have to fight the rocks. Sweet. Well, we'll let that sit for about an hour and then, uh, hit it again with the trowel and That'll probably be as much as I touch it today because I think that's all I got time for. But it'll be good enough. Um, good enough to really, uh, really work me.
Well, it's still super, super wet, but uh, I have to get going. So fortunately, might be what it is. I might get lucky enough that when I get home tonight, it'll still be workable because it is cooling off. So we'll see. But uh, anyway, if it's not workable, I'll catch you in a few days when we strip the forms. See how heavy this bad boy is. All right, it is super windy, so sorry about that. But we are gonna strip this real quick. Look at that, easy peasy. see how much this bad boy weighs. I'm hoping for about 240 pounds, um, but it felt like it might be heavier. I'm not sure. Sorry about the wind. I'll try not to break the scale here. Oh my gosh. What? 275? Holy cow. Probably gonna have to make a smaller one. This thing is a beast. Holy cow. Whew. All right, just finished up my last uh, prep workout for my strongman competition, and I was not able to use the new Hoosfell stone. Here it sets. It's too heavy for me. Ended up being 275 pounds and I was shooting for 230. So uh, a little bit of an issue there. I can only get it like a couple inches off the ground. I cannot get it up to my chest. So I guess that's a new goal. Um, anyway, this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the original Hoosfell stone. So original Hoosfell stone is in Hoosfell, Iceland. And uh, it was used as a gate for a sheep and goat pen by a pastor named Snorri Bjorsson, something like that. And it was 410 pounds, freaking massive. And they would use it for like rites of passage, uh, feats of strength, that kind of stuff. Um, and you were considered lazy bones if you could only get it up to your knees. So I guess I'm like not even lazy bones because this stone is not 410 pounds and I can barely get it a couple inches off the ground. So, yep, lazy bones right here. Uh, you were considered uh, half strong if you could get it up to your waist, and you were considered full strong if you could get it to your chest and walk around the goat pen. Seems to me like there's a big gap between half strong and full strong, but uh, that is what it is, I guess. So, anyway, if you wanna build yourself a Hoosfell stone out of concrete, you can do it just like saw in this video but uh just know that the weights are gonna vary so maybe uh the summer maybe the moisture will kind of come out of it and it'll lighten up a little bit um it was suggested to me to maybe cut it down but i think i just want to make another one and then um, have this one as a goal to be able to do at some point so anyway thank you so much for watching uh see you next time